What's going on guys? Big Jer, back with you again. And today, I'm super excited to talk about Massive X. It just released, and I bet you guys are as excited as I am. This isn't a first look or walkthrough of the synth. If you guys are looking for something like that, go over to the Warp Academy page. We'll be posting a Massive X first look and highlights. Plus, we'll be answering a lot of your most common questions. In this video, I wanna get into the performer. Specifically, remote triggering. It is super sick and I can't wait to show you. All right, let's get into it. So performers come a long way since the original Massive. To find it, we're gonna go over here, right under P1. This is a lot more robust and flexible than it was in Massive Original. And to top everything off, we've got a remote octave section. And this is what I'm excited to tell you guys about today. So before we get into the specifics, let's hear it in action. So I'm gonna play a small part of a sketch I wrote using this feature. It's gonna be the lead. Let's listen to it right now, and then I'll show you how I did it. The Performer is an advanced modulator. The Performer can produce complex contours, which are essentially sequences of modulation shapes. You could adjust the contours in the editor's performance page right here. At the top, you can see the range bar. We could adjust the sequence length by dragging this. Over on the left, you'll see a list of available drawing tools. These will allow you to draw your contours. Right above that, is your time division. This selects the grid that you're working in. To the left, you've got your performer level. It acts like all the modulators. It's like a wet and dry. And then you've got your rate, so you could speed up or slow down the rate of your sequence. Directly under that, you've got initialize. This will clear your performer. And you could decide if you want to initialize unilateral or bilateral. So before we go any further, let's make sure we understand what we've got so far and how we use the performer. So I've got a blank Massive X opened up right now and we're just gonna do a quick demo. So I've got my performer one right here, my P1, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag that up to the wavetable position, okay? I haven't actually modulated it yet. This is the sound we're going for. Okay, that's the action we're going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make it the full length of the wavetable. And here is my modulator. All right, so I can go ahead and make a little node here, kind of bring it up, make another one here. I could bring it back down, whoops. Okay, and then it's gonna give me a nice triangle shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my tab here, my grid tab, and we're gonna say, okay, well, we've got our launch mode here. And this is the last section that I wanted to talk about. So what does this mean? It's set to remote, so it's waiting for a remote trigger, which we're going to get to in a second. That's the whole crux of the video. But let's go ahead and set it to key. And now when I press a key on my MIDI keyboard, it will activate the performer. But first I have to play from the correct column. As you can see, there's 12 columns up top and 12 numbers down below that correspond. So right now I have column six lit up and that's not what I want. I've got nothing drawn in column six. I've got something drawn in column one. Just so you know, you could drag that over if I wanted and that'll copy it over, but that's not what we wanna do, okay? So if you wanna erase it, you just drag a blank one on there. So I'm back over here. And now I'm gonna just go to the bottom and go over to my first column and here we go. Okay, now it's happening, right? So we're starting to get what we want. So we're triggering it with our key and it's going through the shape that we made. And we can make any shape we want. That's kind of the beauty of this. We could do anything we want and it's going to do what we tell it. Okay, this is a really powerful feature. If you noticed, it is looping. So let me zoom out a bit. So we've got ourselves a nice eight bar loop on here and you can see it loop around again. 
So if I want to adjust that, like we said before, we could just adjust that right there. And now it'll loop like that if I want. But what if I don't want it to loop? What if I just want a one shot? Well, you see it right here, boom. And now it won't do that. It'll just trigger one every time I hit a key or a MIDI notes played. Okay, I think you're starting to get it now. Let's jump back to the other massive. But before we jump into it, let me encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button and the little bell. It'll keep you notified every time I have a new video. As an Ableton certified trainer and instructor at Icon Collective, Warp Academy, and Evident, I talk about everything from sound design to cool plugins you need to know about to tips and tricks on Ableton. I also do some finger drumming here and some cool original music, so stay connected. All right, so we're back in the original Mass Effects we were using with the sound we were breaking down. Cool. So you may have noticed that I added a floating keyboard over to the side, and all that's going to do is show you what notes I'm playing on my keyboard. So if I play a C0, you can see that I'm at the octave zero, and the C will light up. Not only will the C light up, but you can see the columns start a switch too. So each column is one half step up. So column one is C0, Column two is C sharp zero, and so on and so forth. And if for some reason you don't like working at the octave zero, you could switch that right here with this remote slider. Cool, easy enough. So let's go over to our main page. Just click this here. And we can see that we are controlling the wavetable position with our performer. Let's head back to our grid, perfect. So one more thing we can see is that I've made a shape here with performer one. I've also made a shape with Performer 2, and I've made a shape with Performer 3, and spread them around the grid. So now when I press play, no modulation is going to happen. With remote turned on, it's going to wait for either a MIDI note to be played or a MIDI note to be read. So you can see here, if I close down the synth, I actually have a lot of this keyed in. Let's go in here and deactivate this by pressing 0 and do it live so you could see it happen. This is actually how I created the riff. I just played it in. You get the idea. You rock out with that for a while and you'll make some pretty cool rhythms that are very organic as you are playing them in. And remember, you could just use this as a sketching tool. Once you find a cool riff that works, Go ahead and just key it in the MIDI like I had it. It works the same. Check this out. One final thing I should mention, for this to work, you have to have the remote switch engaged. I know there's a lot of steps to this, but we walk through it together and I think it's totally worth the time. You'll get used to it. It'll become comfortable. This is a new synth, so there's going to be growing pains anyway. I found this to be very cool for writing riffs. And for me, it was a great alternative to trying to create a riff by drawing in MIDI. This felt like I was more playing the instrument. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for remote triggering. I hope you found this useful and interesting. So please let me know below in the comments what you guys thought of remote triggering or if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover on Massive X. Stay tuned to this channel because I'll be covering a lot of Massive X as I really like this synth. Don't forget to subscribe and like, guys. I'll catch you next time. See ya.